Whenever an object is undergoing translational motion along an axis, along a horizontal axis, that object is said to have linear momentum. Now, linear momentum is given by the following equation. Linear momentum, which is given by the lowercase symbol p, is equal to the product of the mass of the object and the linear velocity of the object as seen by this equation. Now, because velocity is a vector, that means our linear momentum is also a vector. Now, a more general way of defining our momentum of the object is by using Newton's second law of translational motion, which states the following. The net sum of our forces acting on the object or the sum of the forces acting on the object is equal to the derivative of the linear momentum function with respect to time. Now, whenever an object is undergoing angular or rotational motion, that object also has a momentum due to its rotational motion. And that momentum is known as angular momentum. Now, angular momentum is given by a capital letter L. And it equals the product of the moment of inertia of the object and the angular velocity of the object. So, I multiplied by omega. So notice, to go from this equation to this equation, we simply replaced our physical translational quantities with angular quantities. So we replaced mass with the moment of inertia and linear velocity with angular velocity. Now note, this equation only works when our moment of inertia of the object is constant. When the moment of inertia of the object is not constant, we have to use another formula, as we'll see in just a moment. So let's try to derive the analogous equation for this of this equation for angular motion. So recall that when object is undergoing translational motion, a net force is required to accelerate that object to create motion. Now in the same analogous way, what creates angular motion? Well, it's torque. And recall that the net torque acting on a rotating object is equal to the product of the angular acceleration of the object and the moment of inertia. Now, by definition, angular acceleration alpha is equal to the derivative of the angular velocity function with respect to time. So alpha is equal to d omega divided by dt. So we can take this i and bring it inside our derivative function and we get the following result. The derivative of the product of our angular velocity and the rotational inertia of the object with respect to dt. Now notice i multiplied by omega is simply our l. It's the angular momentum. So we can replace this quantity with L and we get the following general equation. So the sum or the net torque acting on the object is equal to the derivative of the angular momentum function with respect to time. Now recall when we spoke about linear momentum, we said that there exists a law called the conservation of momentum. So the initial momentum of the object is equal to the final momentum of our object. In the same exact analogous way, there's also a conservation of angular momentum. Now, under certain conditions, our angular momentum is conserved. What exactly is this condition? Well, if, according to equation B, the net force on the, or the net torque acting on the object is zero, that means the derivative of our angular momentum function with respect to time is also zero. So that means our L is not, does not change. Our L is constant. And if L is constant, that means we can use equation A. Equation A tells us that our angular momentum of the object is equal to the product of these two terms. So if this is true, then we have the conservation of angular momentum, which states the following. The total angular momentum of an object remains constant as long as the net torque acting on the object is zero. And we can use the following equation.
So the initial angular momentum of the object is equal to the final angular momentum of that object. So let's look at one application. Let's solve the following example. Let's suppose an object rotates about an axis of rotation with initial linear velocity of V0 is equal to 3 meters per second and an initial radius of R0 is equal to 0.6 meters. Now, if we change the radius, if we decrease the radius to R equals 0.35 meters, let's calculate the final velocity, the final linear velocity of the object, V. So before we use, before we apply the conservation of angular momentum, let's recall the following two equations. The linear velocity is equal to the angular velocity multiplied by R, the radius, and the moment of inertia of the object is equal to the mass of that object multiplied by our radius squared. Now, these equations are for objects, small objects, rotating in the following circular fashion. So, let's begin with these equations. So, this equation states that the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum. So, let's replace I0 and I with MR0 squared and MR squared. So, we simply get the following equation. Now we can rearrange the left and right sides to the following form. And notice uh, omega naught, r naught, is simply our initial velocity of the object. While omega r is simply the final velocity of the object, this is what we're looking for. So if we take this and divide this by our r, we get our omega r, which is our final velocity. So the final velocity of the object is equal to 3 multiplied by 0.6 divided by 0.35 and that gives us approximately 5.1 meters per second. So we use the conservation of angular momentum to solve this problem to find the final velocity, linear velocity of our rotating object.